Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with our main uh, segment today. Uh, today, uh, we are uh, showing or introducing uh, to you uh, a successful uh, example of uh, an Egyptian doctor. Uh, we are hosting uh, today Dr. Hani Abdel Gawad, uh, consultant of uh, spine surgery. He uh, studied here in Egypt in uh, the Faculty of Medicine in Al Azhar University, and then uh, he uh, made uh, several uh, studies and fellowships in uh, the University of uh, Montreal. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Abdel Gawad. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, uh, Dr. Abdel Gawad, uh, I really have uh, the pleasure and the honor to host you today. Uh, um, I know that you recently, uh, um, uh, your uh, surgery, last surgery, left um, a big uh, echo around. So uh, before we uh, start talking about this uh, uh, critical uh, surgery, uh, spine surgery, uh, let's um, uh, have um, uh, a wide look uh, about your studies. Uh, uh, your, uh, uh, you studied in Al Azhar University and then uh, Montreal University. Uh, first, the pleasure is mine. Thank you so much for you and all the crew for inviting me. Uh, actually, uh, I studied, as you mentioned, here in Al Azhar University. Uh, I graduated in 2002. Uh, then got the master and doctoral degree from Al Azhar University. Uh, I did uh, several uh, fellowships, uh, research fellowship uh, and clinical fellowship. Uh, clinical fellowship means training, training on a spine surgery in advanced uh, institute either for uh, yes. pediatric or adult spine surgery. Uh, so my mo main training was in Canada, in the uh, University of Montreal. Uh, I did uh, training on uh, adult spine surgery and pediatric spine yes. surgery. So um, uh, let's have a, a closer look uh, to uh, the most important and critical surgery that uh, uh, you have uh, made, yeah. um, uh, spine surgery that you recently made, and it left um, a, a big echo around, and it is considered uh, you know, it's um, a print in this uh, kind of surgeries. Yeah, uh, actually, this is what this was a kind of sclerosis surgery. Uh, let let's, me just uh, uh, let's, uh, explain. Uh, let's explain to yeah. our uh, uh, viewers. Uh, I will explain to you uh, what is the sclerosis. Yes. Uh, when you look to anyone from the front or from yes. the back, he should be straight from the head down to the pelvis. Yes. Spines, uh, spine sclerosis means a lateral curvature of the spine. But it is not. So it is a deviation it, of the. Exactly. The spine. It is deviation, but it is not a simple deviation. It is a three dimensional deformity of yes. uh, the spine because the spine is devi deviated and rotated at the same time. Yes. Yes. So it is a complex pathology. It affects the pediatric population from age of zero to the age of skeletal maturity until the age of about yes. 14 or 16 years old. Yes. Uh, what was different about this case, uh, actually uh, spine deformity or scoliosis surgery is very common surgery. We do that every day. Yes. Uh, but how, the, how old was the, the patient? This patient, uh, the age was one of the problems. She had multiple risk factors. And the risk factors, uh, one of them was the age. It was uh, 23 years old. And she had a genetic problem called osteogenesis imperfecta. Uh, osteogenesis imperfecta means the brittle bone. Brittle bone. Uh, fragile. This is exactly. You it is it brittle it or is fragile bone. Uh, this is a genetic disorder. Uh, the child born with this uh, disease. And it's ca characterized by multiple incidents of fracture. Yes. The child can be fractured while in bed without any trauma. So the problem with this uh, is the bone is very fragile, uh, the bone quality is very bad, and it comes with uh, deformity in uh, the upper extremities, the arms and the hands, and the lower extremities as well, yes. from the different types of fracture and repair. Yes. Sclerosis now is a secondary to this genetic disorder. Yes. And to tell you, uh, uh, sclerosis surgery is very the common. The deviation of uh, the spine. Exactly, this deviation of the spine is very common. And uh, the treatment uh, it could be like wearing a brace or doing a surgery. Yes. And there is indication for each type of... To simplify things, if we have scoliosis that reached about 50 degree of deviation, you tell yes. that it is a, de a lateral deviation. If this deviation reached 50 degrees, we should do a surgery to correct that. Yes. It is a, a pediatric group of patients. The earlier you do the surgery, the better the outcome. If you do the surgery at 50 degrees... So it has a specific uh, uh, time or age? 
exactly exactly the most common type of scoliosis yes. is called duopathic scoliosis or scoliosis with no uh, known uh, is the deviation of the exactly spine. it's the deviation of spine i'm just um, um, repeating the definition uh, for our yes, viewers to, to I understand so if you do have this scoliosis it's very common it is yes. not a rare disease yes. every uh, 100 child four of them have scoliosis yes so it is very common. But if you do have like a 50 degree curve, 60 degree, 70 degree, the surgery is reasonable with very uh, good results. Mm -hmm. But this patient has a scoliosis of 120 degree. If this 120 100 centimeters? Is, no, 120 uh, degrees. One, the, the lateral deviation was 120. Deviation, yes. yeah. And her age was advanced. If you are doing 120 degree, at the age of 10 or 11 years old, yes. it is dangerous, but better outcome. Why? Because the spine is still flexible. You have the vertebral column that's still yes. flexible. But if you are doing that at 23 years old, the spine is rigid with this fragile type of bone disease. Yes. And the other risk factors in this patient was having kyphosis. She had to, uh, 120 degree of scoliosis yes. and 110 degree of kyphosis. Kyphosis means we said scoliosis is lateral deviation of yes, the spine. Kyphosis means bending of the spine. Yes. It is not straight like this, it is it's bent, like, exactly. So 110 degree of kyphosis was a major kyphosis with major scoliosis. And we, we say 120 degree of scoliosis, but there was a lot of, uh, uh, another two curvature up and down, 70 degree and 65 yes. degrees. You, you, you can see now, this is the lateral deviation of the spine, huge deviation in uh, 11 years old. You can see the spine is not straight, it's deviated a lot. And if you see the lateral images of cis patients, yes. you will find a kyphosis as well. What we do in the surgery, we insert the screws. And you were able, doctor, to correct the spine. Yes, uh, yes, spine. We, 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 do, we, we do that. And uh, it is uh, a major surgery. and with multiple risk factors, yes. and the risk factor increase with the severity of the patient. If, if the patient has severe scoliosis, the yes. risk will be higher. Uh, to continue with the, with the patient you asked me, uh, me about, uh, it has osteogenesis imperfecta, it has major scoliosis, yes. it has major kyphosis, yes. and it has the brittle bone of the original pathology. Yes. Her age was 23, and her height was 110 centimeter only. Yes and he weighed about 30 kilograms. Yes. All those are risk factors. Actually, accumulation of all these risk factors in a single patient made from the surgery is like a very risky surgery. Yes. And it went successfully and the patient is good. Yes. So what were uh, the risks uh, before you start uh, such a, a critical uh, operation? Actually, it's a huge risk. The risk could be uh, damage of the nerves, and it could be uh, the need for intensive care unit. Yes. Uh, it is a major risk because, uh, as we said, the, 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 the scoliosis is a lateral deviation of the spine. This deviation compresses the lung yes. and affects the pulmonary function of the patient. The patient cannot take his breathing like normal patient. Yes. If you are doing a respiratory function, you will find this patient about 50% of the normal. When we do the surgery, we uh, affect this respiratory function as well. So the patient may need to uh, be in the intensive care unit. And when we do a surgery on a fragile bone, uh, we put screws in the spine. Yes. When you put screws in a fragile bone, there is a risk of pulling out the screws. The screws get out of the spine because the, the, the bone is very weak. Yes. So multiple, uh, risk, uh, the other risk is that you cannot correct a lot uh, in this patient because you have no uh, strong bone to hold the correction. So multiple risk factors, actually this patient, uh, the accumulation of all these risk factors, uh, I'm not aware of any yes. patient uh, before with the same uh, risk factors. Yes. How many hours uh, uh, such uh, operations or It took about seven take? hours. Seven hours. Yeah. It is not a huge deal uh, because lots of surgery take seven hours or more, but yes. The risk here, it is not the time of surgery, but this surgery wa was uh, about seven hours. Yes, sir. You, you know it. from uh, the beginning that this is a critical uh, or a hard surgery, 
and uh, you were sure of yourself that you're going to succeed in uh, solving this? Uh, I am never sure for myself. Actually, I discussed... But that's I, why you took a photo or a video for it. Yes, exactly. That's why you... But, but we, we are doing... Uh, my training was uh, in uh, pediatric deformity surgery. Yes. And uh, I, now I'm doing lots of deformity surgery, lots yes. of severe uh, cases like this. Uh, and every severe case was discussed with the family, the possibility, the risk, the advantage from the surgery. But we weighed the benefit against the risk. Yes. And we say, if we do nothing, there is a huge catastrophe that will happen to, because those kids die from this uh, deformity. Yes. Uh, but if we do something, there is a huge risk, but there is a possibility that we will get out of it uh, with uh, lots of benefit. Yes. So, uh, doctor, uh, do you advise um, um, when um, a woman is uh, pregnant to make a 3D? Because the 3D, I know that it uh, shows the, uh, the spine. Yeah, actually, thank you so much for this very nice question. Uh, now, uh, lots of uh, pregnant women come to me to say that I have done a 3D uh, sonar and I recognize the spine deformity in uh, my child and they ask, uh, will they continue or not? Uh, but Sometimes this is different yeah. kind. Uh, as I said, there is different etiologies for uh, scoliosis. Yes. One of them is congenital spine deformity. Congenital means that uh, there is something wrong happened in the vertebral column in the first three months of pregnancy. Uh, half vertebra, uh, the, the, the child born with half vertebra or something like this, and this causes lateral deviation of the spine. Yes. And uh, actually, sometimes there is uh, a minimal problem and sometimes the problem is huge. Yes. Because uh, if the child born with congenital spine deformity, there is possibility uh, that he will need uh, multiple surgeries. And sometimes it is a simple surgery, sometimes uh, it is uh, very complex. Yes. So, uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Abdelgawad, what about the, the, the breast tilt and its relation with the, the spine? Exactly. Uh, Actually, uh, this, uh, this question is very good because uh, to know that scoliosis is a very common. Yes. And in developed countries, what they do to avoid having severe scoliosis, they do something called uh, screening for scoliosis, uh, school screening for everybody. And the other thing, they send all the families to family doctor uh, once a year to look for some disease. One of them is the scoliosis. Yes. Uh, the scoliosis is very simple to diagnose. Everyone can look at his or her child and know that he has scoliosis. How? There is a symmetry in the, uh, in the waist. The waist is not the same, the right and the left. And the, most of the time, one of the shoulders is higher than the other, or the breast is not the same level or the same size. Yes. Sometimes one breast is smaller than the other, or other time. Uh, and the advice here for everybody, don't wait for these things to be very obvious. You should know that very early because the earlier we have a diagnosis, the better is the outcome. Yes. If you wait for everybody in the street to tell him that your right shoulder is higher than the left, now yes. it is severe with uh, a very high risk. Yeah. So, uh, doctor, um, one last question. Um, um, you, you said that some, um, uh, some um, um, uh, bones problems or uh, the spine problems, uh, um, uh, um, when uh, the child is born, he has a problem since he is born. So uh, do we, do we uh, have um, uh, other uh, problems uh, with the bone or uh, the uh, spine uh, by lifting, for example, heavy things or by playing uh, uh, sports or something? This is a different issue. Uh, there is uh, different pathology of the spine. Uh, we are talking about spine deformity, but there is different uh, pathology in the spine like the disc prolapse or spondylolysis. Disc prolapse means that we have two vertebra. Uh, we have multiple vertebra, but yes. between each two vertebra there is a disc. And this disc uh, contains like uh, jelly material, and around the jelly material is a fibrous tissue. Uh, disc prolapse means that there is a break in this fibrous tissue and the jelly material come out to compress one of the nerve root. Yes. When it compresses the nerve root, it goes uh, with pain in the side, pain in the legs that increase with coughing and sneezing or uh, lifting something. This is called the disc prolapse. Yes. This can come while lifting a heavy object or pushing something strong. Yes. 
The other thing is back pain. Back pain is uh, a very common uh, issue that uh, all of us uh, have back pain. And there's different uh, things that we do in uh, daily life that can uh, cause this pain, like uh, how we sit, how we bend forward, how we lift objects from the ground, uh, and how we exercise. Yeah. Uh, the majority of back pain comes from the muscles, from the weak uh, muscles. And the muscles responsible about back pain are abdominal, pelvic, and back muscles. Yeah. If you do have uh, those muscles weak, you are more prone to have uh, this back pain. Yes. Well, uh, I thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hani Abdul Gawad, the, the consultant of uh, spine surgery. I had the pleasure uh, to meet you today. It's a pleasure, Mike. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, uh, with this, my dear viewers, we come to the end of this episode of our program, Cairo Local Time. I'm Amal Mukhtar. Thank you for watching.